This is the top rated super soaker on Amazon.com. It is a total joke. See, sunshine! Wait, those are battery water guns! Introducing the ultimate homemade PVC battery powered automatic super duper soaker, or the UH PVC BPAS DS for short. Can a water gun be automatic? Shut up, sunshine. The design for this thing is fairly straightforward. I feel like I say that with every project. Anyway. Hey, Bob. We're gonna have a large PVC tank on the top. On one end, we're gonna have a ball valve. That's where you're gonna load in the water from. Then we're gonna have a smaller piece of PVC pipe at the top. That's gonna be our barrel for the thing. We'll do some decorative fitting or something at the front to make it look cool. We're gonna use a battery powered pump right in here. It looks just like a drill. See, goes to like, you know, 100, 150 PSI, I don't know. It's just a pump and it works well and it's battery powered um, so you don't have to pump it by hand and what have you. So the pump is going to feed air around into the chamber. This of course is gonna be filled with water. Pump is gonna feed air into the water chamber, creating pressure inside there. And then the water will then feed down here and stop here at this valve. So when I pull the valve, the water goes down the tube and out the barrel. Splish, splish, splash, whatever. We're gonna hold the different parts together with pipe clamps which are just gonna strap the whole thing down, like so. Now, of course, all of this is still subject to change, because I can't stick to anything. But we got enough design down to move into materials. This materialist is, of course, heavily subject to change, but uh, here's what I think I'm gonna need right now. At least a two feet length of three inch diameter schedule 40 PVC pipe. At least a two foot length of half inch PVC pipe. A three inch PVC end cap, the ball valve and all the fittings to take it from the ball valve up to the three inch diameter PVC pipe. Duct tape, whatever color you like. Some fittings to put on the end of the barrel to make the end of the barrel look cool. Some air hose, some tubing, a bunch of giant pipe clamps, a blowgun valve, a couple of these things. I'm gonna have to find another one somewhere. A half inch, is that even half inch? Hang on. Never mind, that's not half inch. One of these things that will go on the end of your tubing. This is just a compression fitting that goes on the end of this tubing that I have. We're gonna use this to connect to some of these uh, end caps that just thread on. My thinking right now is we're gonna take these end caps and drill a tiny little hole in the end of the end cap and that's gonna be our nozzle. I have three of them because I have a feeling I'm gonna screw up the nozzle and I'm gonna have to do it multiple times. That way we can also test different size holes, see which one shoots the farthest. <sighs> Anyway, you're gonna need something kind of like this system. You could probably figure out something else that would be cheaper and work just as well. But this is what I figured out. Maybe I'll figure out something else once I get into it. I don't know. I'm talking too fast. That's all the materials I think I'm gonna need, so. Two feet. That seems big enough. End cap, ball valves, I'm gonna go on this end. Like I said, this is where you fuel up. As you can see, you twist it, it opens, close it, it's an airtight seal. It's a ball in there. One end of it's hollowed out, that's why it's called a ball valve. Mm -hmm. Gotta go slow and test the fit each time. If I go too large, it ain't gonna be good. As I'm sure you guessed, you stick it through the inside and then push and pull it on through the outside. And there we go. Make sure the fittings are clean. Okay, clean. Cleanish, cleaning. Geronimo. What, you don't clean things with your shirt? What are you, a girl? Be sure to read the instructions on these cans. Uh, you probably shouldn't get this on you. Uh, it smells like it'll melt your brains. Oh, I can feel it melting my brain. If I read the instructions, I'd probably find out that it says to do this in a well-ventilated area and do it with a mask on or something. But as we know, instructions are for nerds and 
Weak women. Can this stuff make you high? I don't really want to get high. I'm tall enough already. That was a dumb joke. Oh, wee. I am giving myself cancer. <laughs> I've got corona. Okay. I think you're supposed to let that dry for a couple minutes. Oh, gosh, I gotta stop. Hang on. I'll be right back. feel like a peaceful protester. Anyway. I'll go ahead and finish with the camera off. In all seriousness, do this in a well-ventilated area because this stuff is not very nice to breathe in. So we have the tank and we have the barrel. Before we go any farther, I'm gonna spray paint them. After I spray paint it, I'm gonna wrap this in duct tape. The reason I'm gonna be wrapping it in duct tape is PVC degrades in UV light, ultraviolet light. It comes from the sun. Coincidentally, also the reason you get sunburned. Skin does not like UV light and neither does PVC. <laughs> I hear no leaks. 30 PSI. Once again, no leaks. <laughs> Are you seriously drinking Diet Coke right now? Uh, yeah. That crap is nasty. Oh, it's not. Yes, it is. So I need to find the angle. There's <laughs> another. Go ahead and figure out how long we need this thing to be. Making sure to give us some extra. I'll go ahead and cut it here. Boom. Ah, come on. There we go. Cut it through. Feed it through. Go ahead and jam this thing through. And of course, this is a press fit valve. It'll go in this way and it won't come out. It's got little teeth in there that prevent it from backing out and then this will just thread on like so now we just need to drill the hole in the top creating our nozzle this is not the greatest way to do the nozzle i'm not 100 percent sure this is gonna work but i don't really have any other options since i don't own a 3d printer if i did i could just 3d print the correct perfectly engineered nozzle that could actually thread into something and all the parts would fit together right and it would be so beautiful but i don't have a 3d printer we have us a tiny hole yeah, I definitely need to figure out a way to permanently affix that in there. Now, we get to finish putting it... Now let's put it together. <laughs> I got just the right size. I gave plenty of this tube so we can wrap this around. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And now we get to find out if it works. <laughs> so to fill this thing, obviously you just open the ball valve and then take your water dispensing device. This guy is obviously absurdly huge. The downside is that it's super heavy when it's filled up. The upside is that it holds a lot of water. Go ahead and start pressurizing. I'm at 60 PSI. We'll give 60 PSI a shot first. It is that rather annoying time of the video where I come and tell you, you need to subscribe to the channel. So I make money. Also, if you want to get more behind the scenes stuff and see what I'm doing in between projects, you need to go over to Instagram and follow me at the Jake who makes. And now comes that time of the video where you get to see me do something stupid. Please not only subscribe, but hit the bell. I'm a lot
time. All right, I'm at 95 psi, 100 psi. We've got a very nice uh, fray here, but as you can see, we got some big nozzle problems. 70 psi. Very nice. The problem we're having is this clear tubing that I used has a lot of bend in it, as you can see, because it was curled up. So the flow of water is being directed down, hitting the hole at an edge, and that's causing it to fan out all wonky. We don't want that. This is what I came up with. As you can see, if you look inside here, all those little coffee straws in there. Theoretically, this is supposed to create a laminar flow, which means all of the turbulence in the water is straightened out as it has to go through all these little straight straws so that when it hits the nozzle, theoretically you get a very smooth stream of water all going in one direction. That's in theory. In reality, I have noticed no discernible difference with or without the straws. However, laminar flow is a real thing. I highly encourage you to go into the description and check out the King of Randoms video on how to make a laminar flow fountain. It's really incredible looking. I'm going to use a tip nozzle from one of these blowguns. Now you're already gonna have a blowgun if you build this because we used one for the valve. And all of these blowguns come with a nozzle. This is the one I found that gives it the farthest reach. It's a rubber tipped air nozzle. So we're gonna go with that. For comparison, let's see how far this one will go. The nozzle on this one doesn't have as good of a laminar flow as mine, so we ended up getting a lot more of a mist down there. Also, of course, it doesn't put anywhere near the amount of volume of water downrange. And with that gun, we've got about 40 feet of range. That's more than I was expecting. That's pretty good. We've got wet ground all the way out to 45 feet from where I was standing. That's pretty good. So what I figured out you could do with this, since it's got this ball valve on the front, what you can do is fill it up with air and then tilt it down so all the water is in the front of the tank and all the air is in the back, right? You flip this ball valve real fast, theoretically. <laughs> You have a water cannon, which gives me some ideas for a future project. Capacity is really the question we're all wanting the answer to. The point of a water fight, after all, isn't about sniping someone. No, it's about drenching someone. I'd say that's pretty conclusive. This tank holds over three quarters of a gallon.
QH, PVC, BP, ASDS. Swims for distance, getting 45 feet. Corbot one only got 40 feet. Obvious winner there goes to mine, of course. Capacity also clearly goes to mine. We got at least three quarters of a gallon. For the store-bought one, not even close. And lastly, the drenching potential from the footage clearly has to go once again to the UHPVC BPASDS. Which means the grand winner is the UHPVC BPASDS. Well, I mean, you haven't mentioned how much this thing weighs with a whole well, gallon of water in but it. But the drenching potential it's clearly outweighs freaking the heavy. other. Also, it's massive, like huge. It's like this long, kind of cumbersome, don't you think? And then how much money did this thing cost for you to make? I mean, the drill pump, the battery for the drill pump, all the pipe fittings, all the PVC, uh, the parts that didn't work that you had to take back and buy new parts to didn't get in, well, all the trial and error. That. It took a long time yeah, it did. for it you to build this. So you've got the cost of the thing, which wasn't cheap, and then all the time it took you to make it. And the store-bought one, all you have to do is pump it with your hand and the water comes out instantly. For this one, the UPV, be something or other, kind of a dumb acronym. Before it'll start shooting water, you have to hold that thing down for like 30 seconds for it to get enough air pressure in there to pump it all the way up before you can pull down the valve. And then it's price, time, weight, how long it takes you to fill it up, because it's like three quarters of a gallon, kind of takes a while. And it's a stupid design in the first place. There's a way more efficient way to do this. Let, let, let me show you. Here, check this out. Instead of using an electric pump to pump air into the tank to pressurize the water and having to use a valve and all that other stupid stuff, really, you should have just cut the middleman out altogether and used a water pump. You got constant pressure and it's way more compact. So you don't need a valve in there at all. The valve is the trigger on the water pump. So the water pump takes the water from the tank and starts pumping it straight out. You don't need a valve. You don't need to wait for the air to pressurize the chamber and because you don't need air pressure in there you don't need a pressurizable tank and it shoots just as far if not farther i mean look at the stream he's got going that is really something basically, basically there's no reason anyone it's... should ever build your super soaker it's inferior in every way <laughs> i can't do it all right, shut up. Or the UHPVC BPASDAS. No, UHP, UHPVC BPASDS. Or the UHPVC A. Or the UHP. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> no, I can't do that.